Wanted to talk to you guys a bit about an upcoming 3D printer review that I'll be doing. I don't want to say that this is going to be controversial, but I know that there's going to be an initial reaction that I just want to advise against. So this 3D printer that I'll be reviewing is the new uh, Dremel Digilab 3D45. I reviewed their last 3D printer, the uh, 3D40 when it was under um, the Idea Builder brand. But now they've rebranded and they've refocused. And I think they've taken a lot of things into consideration here. The problem is some people, I think, tend to be kind of wary of uh, big brands. I don't think that's necessary because I wonder if some of that comes from the experience that we all had with MakerBot. MakerBot got bought by Stratasys and just kind of what happened there. And maybe it's just this feeling that um, corporate America can't handle 3D printing and they're going to ruin it. I understand that. That's a sentiment and concern that I have, but Dremel, I don't really think of them as corporate America. I think they understand makers. I think a lot of makers have been using their rotary tools for decades. I think they understand their consumer. I think they understand um, makers. I really enjoyed the 3D40 and I've said that a million times, but there's a few reasons that this new printer is really exciting to me. They claim that this is going to be their most reliable and easy to use 3D printer. They say it's going to be good for higher education and corporations which makes sense because that's exactly the customer that I recommend highest for their last 3D printer, so I'm not surprised that the new one is going to be similar. But more importantly, this one has a heated build plate and they say a robust extruder that allows for advanced filaments like nylon and eco ABS. So of course, one of the biggest drawbacks with their last machine was that you couldn't print with high temperature materials because there was no heated bed, which was a shame because the printer was so well enclosed. So they've remedied that now and the extruder is better to handle that. I'm guessing what they really mean is the extruder as well is designed to withstand those high temperatures. So that's gonna help a lot. And who wouldn't love a super reliable machine that can print in high temperature materials? I've never had one of those, honestly. I've got a lot of great 3D printers and I've tested a lot of great 3D printers, but none of them have been super reliable for high temperature materials. It has a lot of the similar features that the last one did. It's got Wi-Fi and I'm guessing the user interface is going to be similar. I'm excited to see software compatibility now because some things have changed since their last 3D printer. And one thing that's a point of pain for a lot of people is that you have to use their filaments and um, that's something that I was initially not crazy about and it's still something that kind of turns me off a little bit but the truth is their filaments are really good, so it's a trade-off that I can accept. Having good, reliable filament on an awesome 3D printer, I can imagine paying a little bit more sometimes for it. So I can forgive them that as long as the prints are amazing, which I'm sure they will be, and I hope to prove that because in a few weeks I'll be getting that 3D printer and I will test it extensively so you guys can check it out. Thanks for tuning in guys. Keep on making awesome stuff and you'll be seeing more of me soon.